Hi, my name is Kevin Jones. In this walkthrough, we'll see how to use the WebAuthn JSON library from GitHub when dealing with FIDO or the rock solid knowledge FIDO component. If you've done any work with FIDO or if you've done any work with rock solid knowledge's FIDO component, you'll know there's some JavaScript to write. And while that JavaScript isn't necessarily difficult, it can be slightly fiddly. When we write this JavaScript, there are two functions that we have to write. We have to write one function to manage device registration and one function to manage login when using the device. What I've done here is I've put both those functions in a single file called fido.js, so we can take a quick look at them. And if I look at these, the complete login function, we can see a couple of things. We can see that we have to handle a lot of base64 encoded data. So for example, at the top here, we call A to B on some data passed in from the server. And then also notice, we create lots of these uint8 array objects as well to use throughout the code. And as you can imagine, it's easy to forget to do this and it's easy to get these things wrong. When we want to use the authenticator, we use navigator.credentials and then either call .get when we're doing a login or for registration, call .create. And again, for both of these, for the date that comes back, we have to do lots of conversion. So again, here we're building lots of uint8 arrays and we're calling b to a to convert ASCII to base64 data. And if I look at the get call, we see the same thing there. So again, lots of uint8 arrays and lots of calls to b to a. So GitHub have produced a library called webauthn-json. And the idea behind this is that it makes it easier to use webauthn within our code. So rather than writing the awkward JavaScript that we saw, we can use this library instead. And this library provides a couple of functions, it provides a create function and a get function. And we use these rather than using the navigator.credentials object. And this is good, but the one slight downside to this library is it's written in TypeScript. So if we want to use this library from inside our JavaScript code directly, if we're not writing TypeScript, then there are a couple of hoops that we have to jump through. So let me show you what this library looks like in use first of all, and then we'll see how we set up our project to use this library. So here I have a file called authenticate.ts, which is the equivalent of the fido.js file we just saw. Don't worry about all the red underlines here. We'll fix those in a moment when we start using this library. But here we see code that's functionally the same as the code from fido.js. So here we have a login function and a register function. And there are a couple of things to note here. First of all, we don't see calls to B to A or A to B, and we don't see use of U and A to raise. That's all hidden by the library for us. Also notice that because we're in TypeScript, we get type information. So we have public key credential parameters, we have public key credential RP entity types, for example, and we can see how we should set these up and use these within our code. And then finally notice that we have calls to get rather than using navigator.credentials.get. And these calls are much simpler than calls from the JavaScript code. Notice we can use await here to make the call. And similarly for the registration, we have a call to create. And again, we await on the call. And when this call completes, we can then go off and finish the work that we needed. And again, notice there are no awkward calls to B to A, A to B, or again, awkward calls to using uint A to array. So let's see how we set up our project to use this. Now the project I'm using here is using ASP.NET Identity. So this is a standard ASP.NET MVC web application that's just using Microsoft's ASP.NET Identity to manage identity for us, i.e. to manage the login for us. So we'll see how to use this library in a base level C-sharp ASP.NET application. I guess the point I'm making here is that we're not using things like Angular and that sort of thing. So we don't have things like Webpack already set up for us. And that's what we're going to see here, how to set up Webpack in this solution to allow us to build this library, to use it as if it was JavaScript code rather than TypeScript code. In theory, I could just take this TypeScript file and compile it using TSC, the TypeScript compiler, and generate JavaScript. Unfortunately, in practice, that's not going to work. And it's not going to work because my file here uses other modules. For example, it's using the WebAuthn JSON module. And when we compile this file, we need to build a JavaScript file that also contains all of that code. 
And the way we'll do this is to use Webpack. So to do that, I need to set up various configuration files. I'm going to use npm and node to install the modules that I need. I'm going to use TypeScript to compile the code, and I'm going to use Webpack to pull it all together. So essentially we need to write three configuration files. The first one is a package JSON file that contains my node information. So inside dub 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 root, I'll add a package JSON file, and that file will look like this. So we have a couple of things. We have the dependencies that we need. So things like the loaders the Webpack are going to use. We have TypeScript as a dependency, and we have WebAuthn and JSON as a dependency. I've also included a script here that I can run to build the output. So this will just run the Webpack command, passing in a Webpack config file that tells Webpack what to do. So that's the next thing we can add. So again, in my www root folder, if I add, in this case, it's a JavaScript file called webpack.config.js. And that file looks like this. So in here, you're doing a couple of things. We're telling Webpack how to load TypeScript files. In this case, it's going to use a tool called ts-loader, and that's referenced in my package JSON. And we can see that here. And ts-loader will take my TypeScript and compile it, as well as doing other things like making sure we pull in all of the appropriate modules that we need. We're telling Webpack what the entry point of the application is, and that's going to be my authenticate.ts code. And then in the output section here, we're doing a couple of things. We're telling Webpack what the output file should be, and that will be bundle.js. So that will take all of the TypeScript, all of the included modules, and compile it into JavaScript. And that JavaScript we put into a dist directory, and the file will be called bundle.js. And then finally, we're telling Webpack that I want to create a variable called ASP and Webpack and assign this to a var. And we'll see what that looks like in a moment once we've built this code. So the other thing I need here is a TypeScript configuration file. So again, in dubdubdub root, I'll add another JSON file, and this is called tsconfig.json. And this file looks like this. So essentially here, what I'm saying is I want to compile a file called authenticate.ts. When I do the compilation, I don't want to include things in the node modules directory. And there are various compile options that I specify when I compile this file. So I'm telling it which libraries to include here, for example. And I'm also telling it the module format that we're using for this file. Okay, so now that I have that in place, if I go to a terminal window and go into the dubdubdub root directory, and if I look in here, we can see we have the package JSON file, the tsconfig.json file, and the webpack config.js file. From here, the first thing I want to do is run npm install to install the packages. So everything's been included. So let me clear the window. Now, if you remember, in my package JSON, I have this script, build colon dev. So back in the terminal window, if I do npm run build colon dev, that will run the webpack command for me. And this should generate the output into my dist directory into bundle.js. And sure enough, this built the code. And if I change into the dist directory, and look inside here, there's bundle.js along with its map file. So now that we have this, we can use this within our code. So I mentioned here that in webpack config.js, we had this library target as var and library as ASP and webpack. So what does that mean? Well, if I look inside my disk folder and look at bundle.js, we'll see at the top here, it says var ASP and webpack equals. So it's created this module for me, this variable called ASP and webpack that I can now use within my code. So I want to call this code from inside my CSHTML pages. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is to make sure this file bundle.js in the disk folder is included in the pages. So if I open up my layout CSHTML page, then at the end here, before the render section, I'll add another script that includes bundle.js. And then what I'll do in each of the pages that needs this, I'll add a script block inside the scripts section on that page. So for example, if I do register first, so in register.cshtml, I can get rid of phi.js, I can add an at section scripts, and then inside here, rather than calling register device, 
I want to call the register function from inside my TS file, from inside my TypeScript file. So the function is called register, but the way I do this is through the ASP and Webpack variable. So I say ASP and Webpack dot register and pass it the parameters. So I'm still passing the parameters in the same format here. So model dot base64 challenge, model rely on party ID, model base64 user handle, model user ID, and the callback, which is this complete registration address that we call back to to finish off the registration process. I can then do the same thing in login CSHTML. So again, get rid of fido.js, wrap the script inside a scripts section. And again, rather than calling complete login, call ASP and webpack dot login. And again, passing the same parameters. So if you're using the rock solid knowledge FIDO component, there's one thing here we need to change. If I go to the controller that's managing the registration and the login, in here currently for the complete login call and for the complete registration call, I'm using these base64 classes. So base64 FIDO registration response and base64 FIDO authentication response. I need to change these to make sure these type map onto the web authent JSON responses. And the change is the way that the base64 encoding is used. So we're using base64 URL encoding now. So this becomes base64 URL FIDO registration response. And for complete login, it becomes base64 URL FIDO authentication response. So now that I have that, if I run the application, I'm going to register an account here. I'm going to register a device under that account. I can then log out, log in. It asks me for the device and everything works. But now we're using the web authen JSON library rather than writing the JavaScript ourselves.